Hi, it's Bach Moore from Bacon Trees. Thanks for dropping by and tuning in. I wanted to, I got a, a comment um, yesterday or the day before about uh, my breakout kit. Uh, I made a video on a, a audio visual live sound breakout kit. And he said, hey, uh, you know, thanks, great video. Don't forget about the batteries and charger. And I thought, yes, of course, I got to put that in there because I, I cover batteries um, as part of my breakout kit in my second installment. But I thought I'd just do a a simple battery video quickly just to show what kind of batteries I use for the field. It's all like being mobile in the, in the field and uh, traveling and going to different locations, location sound, audio, visual, live sound, whatever gig I happen to have. I've got wireless units, I've got a uh, camcorder like this camcorder here and I've got different batteries and I've got a lot of rechargeables especially for my uh, uh, wireless mics. Now I don't use rechargeables 100% of the time because if they're not charged, I can't use them. So I have a healthy supply of really good, you know, Energizer, Duracell. I don't buy the lithium batteries though because I've, to me, they weren't worth it. It was more worth getting rechargeables. One of the biggest misconceptions about rechargeable batteries is they don't have the same voltage as primary cells or non-rechargeables. True. Rechargeable batteries are an average of like 1.2 or 1.25 volts, whereas uh, primary cells like this Panasonic or Duracell or Procell or whatever you want are are 1.5 volts. And somebody once told me, well, rechargeables don't work in wireless units because the voltage isn't high enough. However, they do work. Um, it's not about the voltage per se, uh, but it has a lot to do with the, what's called the milliamp hour rating or the MAH rating. So I get batteries. Look, I got these $8 from Ikea. They're 2450 milliamp hours. If you're going to use batteries for like uh, demanding devices like wireless units, I would use higher milliamp hour ratings. For remote controls, I would use lower milliamp hour ratings because they don't need that, uh, they don't need that sort of energy capacity. But um, that being said, I have used these on my wireless mics, my Sennheisers, for a while now with no problem at all. So the misconception is the voltage. Now, Back in September of 96, that's September 96, this is a battery I designed or I built because um, I wasn't making very much money and the re replaceable battery that I was going to buy was 120 bucks and I couldn't afford it. So for around $40, I was able to build a 12 volt battery out of 1.25 or 1.2 volt D cells. 10 of them equaling 12 volts. And I learned a lot about batteries in 1996. For one, look at that curve right there. That's how batteries operate. So a 12 volt battery starts off near 14, 13 and a half or something like that. And then eventually, it, when you turn the machine on, it drops like a volt sometimes. And then eventually you can see these three trends here. They never hit 12 volts for more than just like a moment. So if you have higher milliamp hour batteries and you have three battery bars to indicate strength of your batteries, the first one will drop quicker than a primary cell, but it will stay on the, the last two indicators of battery strength for your unit. It'll stay on those two for much longer because of the high milliamp hour rating. So if you're going to buy rechargeable batteries, buy the high milliamp hour rating. I've got several here, including the IKEA ones I just showed you, and they were $8 and they've paid for themselves a few times now since I've had them for a few months. I've got these Enerstar 2200 milliamp hours. I've got the Energizer 2300 milliamp hours. And these are, um, <clears throat> and these particular batteries are nickel metal hydride and not nickel cadmium, but nickel metal hydride. So nickel metal hydride is not as volatile as like lithium or anything. So I, you know, they're, you can use the regular alkaline batteries, which I have some in here or you can use the nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. The only time you're really gonna see uh, nickel cadmium batteries these days, uh, uh, some of the uh, cordless phones people have still have them. They're still around in different places, but we pretty much moved on with uh, portable laptops and uh, video cameras. My video cameras always higher capacity lithium ion batteries. And 
for wireless microphones, it's nickel and metal hydride, which I'm using. And they've got, you know, they got quite a life to them. They're going to wear out, yes, but they've got quite a life to them. So I just wanted to say that I carry my chargers around with my rechargeable batteries. I've got lots of them. And they power my body packs for my Sennheiser body packs. They power my handheld microphones. And when I, you know, when I run out of charge, I use the primary cell. So I, I mix and match both of them quite often. I've never been disappointed with them. So that's pretty much what, all, all I have to say about batteries. Um, and I do have, as I mentioned in my breakout kit, a battery tester. So I can constantly test to make sure I've got fresh batteries or charge batteries ready to go at, at, at a moment's notice. Anyway, um, if there's any more questions about batteries, please comment, um, subscribe. Um, and or contact me and I'll we'll have a discussion about my you know what I know about batteries and it's not you know I'm not a, the battery professor or anything I've just used them for well everybody's used the batteries but I mean I've actually done lots of experiments on batteries as well not just the ones I showed you but I've done I've got a book of experiments from the 90s a lot having to do with batteries and audio gear and stuff like that but um, anyways thanks for watching please subscribe and thank you very much for watching this video have a great day